As a writer, I grow increasingly distraught over the hubris of the entertainment industry and their habit of ignoring the story as a whole for the sake of reimagining a previous work or turning an animated work into an abomination of something they market as live action. The absolute refusal to understand a character as it was written and then attempt to gaslight those of us who know the originals is abhorrent. I seem to turn to Disney as an example yet again and add one more, Cowboy Bebop. When you change who a character is, you change the story, oftentimes creating plot holes and leaving a nonsensical mess. This mess is often subjected to improvisations which further degrade the story. In the case of Disney, I will concede they have the bad habit of taking fairy tales and fables and sanitizing them to make them safe for children. That will not stop me from comparing their animated works with their <coughs> reimaginings. Cinderella. I have heard actresses refer to her in her story as a damsel in distress that was boy crazy. The mere idea she was looking for a prince is ridiculous. In the animated version, she was looking for nothing of the sort. She wanted to attend a ball and escape from being treated as a slave by her stepmother. Even if it was only for one night, she had no idea with whom she was dancing. Not only that, she left for fear of the spell wearing off. It wasn't until the next day that she showed signs of being love-struck. For those of us that actually paid attention to what we were watching, this little mermaid was infatuated with the surface world and how the people lived on dry land. It was not until she saw Eric on that stormy night that she became enamored with the prince. Even so, she was not helpless as she rescued Eric as much as he rescued her. We're going to address the Oliphant in the room. The blatant disregard and total lack of awareness when Ariel was leaning in to get Eric to kiss her. This, according to the entertainment industry, was Ariel not giving consent because she could not speak. This has got to be the most absurd shit I have ever heard regarding the movies. Body language is all she had, and she clearly was showing she wanted to be kissed. In the live-action debacle, they gave her amnesia and made it seem that Eric was chasing her. What in the flying fuck was the reason for him to do that? He didn't know who she was, and without her voice, she couldn't tell him. Furthermore, without her being able to remember shit from Shinola, how was she supposed to even be attracted to the prince in the first place? I am not going to even touch making him adopted and not royalty by birth. Jasmine. This was someone who was not interested in marriage for status or political reasons. She knew she was being treated like a prize to be won and loathed it. She wanted to marry for love. She also wanted to see what life was like outside of the palace because she felt like a prisoner within its walls. Why the hell would she want to be sultan? That would make her even more of a prisoner in the palace. Peter Pan. The first glaring change I witnessed were the lost girls. In this time, where the industry looks to empower women, why would they do this? According to the Neverpedia and Barry, the author, they are boys who fall out of their prams, strollers, when the nurse is looking the other way, and if they are not claimed in seven days, they are sent far away to the Neverland. The explanation goes on to say that girls are too smart to fall out of their prams, and that is why there are no lost girls. So in order to be inclusive, they are saying girls are dumb enough to fall out of their prams and not be claimed. That's what I take away from it. Not terribly empowering, is it? In my memory, Peter was carefree and loved a toy with Captain Hook in the animated film. There were times when he was malicious, but not to the point in the live-action counterpart. Peter was also very capable of handling his own business and really didn't need to be rescued. He wasn't stupid, just eternally young. They changed the core of who Peter is, and that is an injustice. Wendy drew Peter's attention because he was looking for a mother figure for the Lost Boys. Little did he know she was facing having to grow up and move out of the nursery, thus leaving childhood behind. Wendy did not know if she was ready for either role. Again, they changed her in order to make her more important than Peter. They made Tiger Lily unnecessary. Cowboy Bebop. When I think back to the episodes of the Netflix series, the more Jet, Julia, and Vicious make me angry. And it's not the casting, it's what they did to them. They took Jet, a framed and disgraced cop, and also made him into an inept and deadbeat dad who couldn't even make time for his daughter. Stereotype much, Netflix?
they defanged Vicious and gave all of his craftiness, cunning, and bloodthirsty nature to Julia, leaving Vicious as nothing more than a stupid idiot who pointed in a direction and showed him who to kill. I don't remember which episode was the last one I watched before I just couldn't stand to watch anymore. They even went out of their way to change Gren, changing part of Vicious's past. This upsets me. They presented Gren as transgender when he was not. He was a victim of Vicious and an experimental drug gone wrong. We've, we've all seen adaptations of written works and are intelligent enough to know a note-by-note -note adaptation of a novel to the big screen just doesn't happen. All we can hope for is a respectful representation of what we read. Sometimes we walk away satisfied. Much of the time we walk away with complaints as to what key things were left out, changed or omitted. Then there are the adaptations that make us want to pull out our hair because it's unrecognizable. More often than not, it is because the characters were changed and twisted into something other than the characters we remember. Four things are clear to me. In my opinion, they don't care enough to respect the source material, or they hate it outright. They are too lazy to write their own stories, and they are doing this knowing full well people will hate watch something they suspect will be bad, just so they can keep the rage machine rolling. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next rant. I'd like to take this time to thank you, the viewer, and my supporters whose names are on the screen for watching this video. If you liked it, there's a like button down there, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notified every time there's an upload. There's also a video down below here in the bottom left-hand corner as a suggestion, as well as a couple of places that you can click to subscribe. As I always say, behave, my lovable misfits, and if you can't behave, at least be good at it.